Warning, the show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. This show is produced by Geek Happy Network, constantly curious about the things we love. If you enjoyed listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We would love to hear your thoughts. This This is Smorgasbord! Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick, and here is my co-host, Angel. And today we have a special guest. Would you want to introduce yourself, Mr. Special Guest? My name is Nicholas Ayerbe Badona, and I'm special. (laughs) <laughs> I thought you were going to go on the rap here. or something. <laughs> I was born special. I have special needs. <laughs> <laughs> what special kind of special carbonated needs? Do you needs. Have? <laughs> carbonated needs. Carbonated needs. I and need the fizz. The fizz. So do I. This is why I'm chugging some rock star right now. <laughs> this is my that's breakfast like, smoothie right here. <laughs> that is Dang. a giant. That's some giant lettering for that yeah. can. It has 180 caffeine. unhealthy caffeine per can. Well, speaking of carbonated, we are today exploring the cult of La Croix. Yay! Is that, is Yay. It, did I pronounce that right? La Croix? There are two ways of saying it. Many people who are fancy like to use the French way to go with La Croix. And then there is the way that the American inventor says it as La Croix. La Croix. La Croix. <laughs> <laughs> well, just like we should follow the, I guess, the American La Croix. Because yeah. it is an American drink. Yeah. Super American. The Super. most Midwestern drink. <laughs> Indeed. And while this popular brand of sparkling water rose to popularity as early as 2002. The roots of it go all the way back to the 80s. I guess before we dive deeper to the history of this cult, let's... It's older than a lot of my friends. It is, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) It's crazy, actually. I was like, oh, is an 80s drink? (laughs) Yeah, did not... I thought that was cocaine. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I think that explains the colors. The color pattern. Yeah. The can design is quite quite 80s looking yeah it's what makes it attractive for me because i feel like i'm eating that color (laughs) you know what their cans look like to me they look like bus seats like coach buses buses (laughs) you know they all have that funky design you know what i'm talking about (laughs) i have no clue what you're talking about or like those 90s um like greyhound drink cups greyhound bus Oh, yes. yes I right? do know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. So when you get a like a like a public bus or whatever and you're traveling and like they're just covered in this weird felt that makes yeah. you feel uncomfortable like it's a by party? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's inviting you to sit there. <laughs> it's a party on your butt. <laughs> no, we haven't. LaCroix, no. party in your butt. <laughs> Party. <laughs> he played the Venga like Bus party. song from there. Okay, back to LaCroix. Yeah. Well, before we go to LaCroix, I figured we'd explore a little bit about the history of sparkling water and the fascinating world of the non-alcoholic beverage industry a little bit. As a random fun fact, I found out today when I was researching this show episode that soft drinks refer to used to refer to any non-alcoholic drink (laughs) as opposed to hard drinks which is alcoholic drinks was there a defining line of the amount of alcohol Mm -hmm. that you could put before it was a hard drink um i think by how they would think about it it would probably be considered a soft drink it's one of those like (laughs) if it if it doesn't get me drunk then it's a soft drink it seems oh then kombucha <laughs> kombucha is a hard drink for me <laughs> someone fact check me but i also think kombucha was probably just in india at the time and not found anywhere else in planet earth yeah probably so i don't think americans knew that you could grow bacteria and drink it 
Yeah. <laughs> and even they probably like, just I mean, did it on accident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then died. <laughs> but I mean, like, even say pop, for example, the sugar there sometimes apparently can, if you leave it long enough, <laughs> it ferment. just ferments Ew. itself. Just a fermented Coke. <laughs> yeah. Or some of them would have like super low traces of alcohol still or whatever. I don't know. I'm not. I'm no scientist. <laughs> this should be the tagline of the show. <laughs> I'm not no a science. scientist. <laughs> Smorgasbord. We're not scientists. <laughs> well, sparking water actually roots all the way back to mineral water, which apparently actually has a ter- a definition why it's called mineral water. It's water with minerals. <laughs> well, yeah, mineral water tastes kind of yucky to me. Does it? Oh. Yeah, I, like, like I a, could never tell the difference between just water and not water. I mean, like when I drink water from, say, the Philippines and the water here, I could see there's a small difference, but yeah, uh, I'm know, pretty sensitive really. to water tastes. I think really because every city water I've tasted is different, and I, I'm very partial to water from here, but we right. also get it from like the mountains, and it's yeah, pure and nice. But, um, yeah, any other city I've been in, I. I'm like, is this tap water drinkable? Nope. Like, even though, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but it tastes gross to me. Really? There used to be this weird spa that I used to go to ages ago. And they always had this, like, bizarre filter machine that you could, like, set the pH of the water. Mm-hmm. And then you would, like, filter it. And the water would, you know, arrive in your cup oh. to drink it. Um completely filtered at your pH desired level. I never tried any other pH, but the highest setting, something like a 9.8 or something like that. (laughs) And the only feeling that I got out of that water was... Acid reflux. No, it tasted... No, because it's like more base or whatever. Oh, wait, yeah, sorry. I I got that. The other way. (laughs) If it's low pH, then it's high. Does anyone know the pH scale? (laughs) I have no idea. We're We're not scientists. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we're not scientists. We're not scientists. <laughs> it's just a number, man. <laughs> but anyway. Hi there. My name is Kanyeki Kamawe, and I'm the host of the Represented Podcast. No matter who you are and no matter where you come from, we each have a story to tell. The Represented Podcast explores individuals' life stories with the hope that we can identify with or learn from them. Subscribe and listen to the show on YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or even Spotify. You can also check us out on the Geek Happy Network website. That's geekhappynetwork.com. Finally, follow the show on Instagram at Represented Podcast to keep up with the fun stuff. Love to see you there. Peace. Yeah, well, that's what it is with mineral waters. It just has different kinds of substances, say like magnesium or calcium or sodium or things that kind of exist in the water. They just kind of dissolve into the water through natural sources. So, for example, you there could have a lake with sand or rocks like limestone, for example, that it might have over time start having the limestone dissolve into the water. You don't really see it, but then you'll have those minerals there. You're so drinking by def- a rock. Pretty much, yeah. So by definition, what would be considered a mineral water would have at least 250 parts per million of minerals dissolved into the water. So I think it's like one part is about one milligram per liter of water. So 250 mm. gram mi- milligrams per liter of water. So it's actually not a lot, but obviously, because the more you have, the more the color will probably take on and wouldn't look too much like water. <laughs> now the reason we do drink mineral water actually dates as long as far back as the roman times thousands of years ago even back then they believed it had s- some health benefits to it but they're Scient- not scientists either <laughs> yeah they're not scientists either <laughs> but according to some scientists it does make sense to make that mineral water could be kind of healthy because most of the minerals contained in the water tend not to be some things that our body can produce so things like magnesium and calcium we don't really just naturally produce that but there are also some sources that do say that there's just not enough parts of those minerals in the water for it to actually be worth your daily intake so you have to probably drink i don't know like gallons of that water (laughs) to make it worth it it's good to hydrate 
So in, in some ways, you kind of just want to treat it more like a supplement, I guess, rather than a primary source of calcium. The rise of the popularity of the mineral water back during the Ro ancient Roman times also kind of led to the rise of thermal baths. They ha believed they had some kind of healing properties in the water that could help make them feel better. Believe it or not, there also were like natural reserves of carbonated water back then too. So then they kind of saw that as mineral water as well. So those were seen to be like med medicinal or therapeutic because most of the thermal baths weren't really man-made or artificially made. So they kind of take the water from these natural reserves of um, carbonated water, at least for like those thermal baths that used carbonated water. Now, of course, today we see carbonated drinks as kind of polarizing, whether it's healthy or not, but... I can tell you this is not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> right. I saw I saw somebody who basically copied uh, a BuzzFeed video channel, one of those React sort of channels. Somebody just basically went to Afghanistan and went to an Afghani village and is just making all these videos about, like, how do villagers feel? How do villagers feel about all these things that they don't know? So, like, they have an episode on donuts, they have an episode on burgers, and it's all these Afghani villagers that have never had any of these things. So right. they do a carbonated drinks one, and all of them basically, like, drink carbonated drinks like the ones that we know mm. uh, are now famous in the Western world. And they're all kind of like, it's salty. And I kept on wondering throughout the entire video, why do they think it's salty? And then I realized maybe because they've never had bubbles in their drinks. Right. right. Like they don't know how always, to describe that. They don't taste. know how to describe the feeling of carbonation. And therefore, right. they're kind of just saying like, no, it just tastes like this weird salty drink. Oh, right? interesting. Yeah. They hated Gatorade. They loved Red Bull. Very dangerous. Interesting. <laughs> 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 Never Gatorade. So I always thought Gatorade was a little bit salty, like not fizzy. I'm talking about like it has right. like a sodiumy taste. Well, it probably has sodium, yeah. right? Oh yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like stronger than other types of soft drinks. It, is that what electrolytes taste like? <laughs> it's <not really> salty. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Here's the current problem with Lacroix addictions. There's only eight cans of LaCroix in, you know, in, a, in a box of LaCroix. You're essentially having to go every week to the grocery store. So I have to go more often than usual just to buy LaCroix. And here's the other issue. Peach is probably the most popular flavor of LaCroix. No, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. and, in the, uh, and in this current Corona times, it's just flying off the shelves which leaves you with the more disgusting flavors, like <laughs> lemon. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one's not that one's not good. So then it ends up being a situation where I have to choose mainstream carbonated drink competition of LaCroix, just bubbly. Buble. Buble, Buble. Michael Buble. Yeah. Buble. <laughs> but yes, bubbly. I don't know. I'm sure bubbly is definitely terrible, which is I something don't like I don't know. it. I'm like, how can you fuck up? Like barely flavored carbonated barely flavored. drink. Hey, and it's just not essence. right. Naturally, naturally essence, essence, but it's just not as good as Lacroix. <laughs> no, it is not. It definitely yeah. feels like a subpar product. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> feels yeah. like the dollar store knockoff. Oh, President's Did Choice you know does have. Yeah. Do they? They do. Yeah. They don't. I haven't do they tried have, it, what is but it called? I've seen the it. Cross. The cross. <laughs> the what's the opposite shape of a cross? <laughs> the satanic cross. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of like carbonated water, do you know there's like a difference between club soda, seltzers, sparkling water, and tonic water? No. All of those things <laughs> disturb me. Like I've always, it's always felt like only old people <laughs> grab a seltzer. Yeah, seltzer just sounds like old. I don't even know what. Yeah, it sounds like, medicated. Well, pretty. Much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's well, seltzer is the pure, pure version of club soda. So kind of club soda would be carbonated water with added minerals, while seltzer would be similar, but usually wouldn't have any minerals added into it. Sparkling water would be more naturally carbonated water. So carbonated water that you would grab from a spring or whatever. 
So it's naturally carbonated already. Then tonic water would be carbonated mm -hmm. water with quinine, which is like quinine. Yeah. Quinine. 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 Just the one from the chinchilla trees. I remember um, in college, it was the first time I heard of quinine because my friends were trying to make some kind of mixed drink and they're like, we right. need club soda or whatever one has quinine in it. That's well, tonic water. And I, that's tonic water. Yeah, I didn't know. So like we went to the grocery store and like we bought club soda, tonic water, <laughs> didn't know the difference. And then we were making drinks and then everybody got very drunk and I still don't remember, didn't remember <laughs> which one was which. <laughs> did the internet did not, didn't it? didn't exist at this time yet Angel? it did it did I mean, just, okay so we just wanted to wing it. it we wanted to wing it could you not alta vista it oh my god i'm not <laughs> that <Netscape>. old <laughs> could, could you not ask jeeves about it <laughs> jeeves what's a quinine <laughs> no we just wanted to wing it like the easiest way would have just to look at the labels to see which one says Mm, true. <laughs> but but you didn't. You bought we them didn't. All. We just bought them all. Well, with carbonated beverage, as the name suggests, it the carbonation itself happens when you add carbon dioxide into the water under pressure. So I guess you give the water a lot of pressure and then carbonate it. Stress them out with real life. <laughs> yeah. we're drinking stressed out water yeah oh, <laughs> no wonder we're so stressed <laughs> yeah. so yeah well the carbonation it actually makes the drink more acidic as well so that's probably why a lot oh. of people like pure water to be with a high ph because maybe it's their way to get away from a more acidic drink like we did talk about you could find these carbonated water naturally it usually happens with limestone which is a carbonate rock so the rock will dissolve the carbon in the limestone and then that adds the carbon dioxide to the water which then creates carbonated water naturally artificially though we had artificial carbonated drinks as old as i guess the as long as, as old as beer has existed, <laughs> as old as fermentation, because mm. beer mm. is a carbonated drink. Um, but when it comes to non-alcoholic or soft carbonated drinks, that happened only as early as the 1700s, where some British doctor, William Brownrigg, first created it artificially when... He, or actually, that was just like by accident. Um, in 1767, though, it's when Joseph Priestley, another Englishman, created carbonated water by suspending a bowl of water over a vat of beer, which created enough pressure and carbon dioxide to enter the water, <laughs> then creating <laughs> carbonated water. Wow. Some beer yeah, alchemy. Thank you, beer. <laughs> Good job, Jason yeah. Priestley. 90210. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and then a few years later, Swedish chemist Tob Tobern Bergman also discovered the same process, but a different, or sorry, discovered uh, carbonated water as well, but using a different process because he was kind of getting sick and wanted, heard about mineral water or carbonated springs making you feel healthier. But instead of using beer, he used chalk with sulfuric acid to produce the oh. uh, carbonated water. <laughs> That's not going to make you feel better. No. <laughs> chalk? Like actual, well, like, yeah, classroom chalk? Yeah, chalk's made out of limestone, I think, or which is carbonate, right? If you've ever been to, like, a gymnast oh, gym, yeah. a farm they have, limestone. like, a bowl of, like, chalk like in their chalk. Yeah. big blocks. Not to make carbonated. <laughs> no, limestone. but I think you, well, I think that's yeah. what the, I think the sulfuric <laughs> acid probably helps the pressure. Right. Or something. Or the dis limestone. dissolving or whatever, yeah. But it wasn't really until the 1800s that carbonated water became popular and that's likely from the pretense of having curative powers um, also with a push to find other drinks to replace alcohol because people were getting too drunk i guess <laughs> uh, so prudes yeah. prudes it got so popular that by the 1830s you start having more complex carbonated waters by having flavors now added to it which also uh, believed yeah. to not only improve flavor but <laughs> oh, also make it more so healthier so you'd see things like ginger or lemon or or i don't know mm. rose petals i guess or something. <laughs> <laughs> 
or you know coca-cola original yeah. formula with cocaine in it <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's by 1886 you see j.s pemberton adding yeah. that cocaine and koala nut koala Koala nut. Oh my god. Like koala nuts? <laughs> like nuts koala. of koalas. <laughs> Pull it off them. <laughs> is this like is this how coke is made? Just how yeah. vanilla You're... tends to be made from like uh, that other animal's nuts or whatever? Yep. <laughs> you, you gotta yank it fast so you don't feel the pain of the koalas. You have to go to Australia to cocaine. make it. Yeah. <laughs> that explains why they're endangered. <laughs> <laughs> but what's interesting back then is that you didn't actually find or buy these products in the groceries. It's perception for healing properties and the ability of them to be able to create these chemical concoctions. Pharmacists were actually the places you would go to buy a lot of these carbonated waters if you wanted carbonated water of any sort you would go to a pharmacy to buy it because then they would be able to create it for you it wasn't until the 20th no. century that we would really see it leave pharmaceutical so shelves and enter the groceries or stores and a big reason for that isn't actually the health reason it's because of technology it was during the 20th century that inventions of the glass bottle or bottle caps came to be and that led to it to leave the pharmaceutical side and enter the grocery and common people's purchasing. Technology. Yeah. And that's where we really started to see carbonated yeah. drinks not become a health product. <laughs> I mean, I guess the reason why I drink La Croix is because I used to drink a lot of just normal Coca-Cola yeah. and other beverage drinks. And basically what I discovered was just, I think I just like yeah. the bubbles. <laughs> Me too. And, uh, Right. I don't necessarily yeah. like the sugar. Or I hate like I hate the ones that try to replicate like actual world flavors. Like Fanta is supposed to be an orange or whatever. Like or orange ooh, drink is weird. Orange. orange drink. Yeah, orange drink is oh, always. Oh really? Weird. It's my. That's but yeah. My go to. It's your you jam. Like orange soda, man. And it's personal taste, right? That's it. Orange soda and ginger ale yeah. are like the two reasons I can't. That's a fun fact i found the first time the term pop was used or referred was by a poet named robert robert southey from a poet named robert robert southey and according to him the term pop comes from the popping sound of a drink which we probably all know when you pop off a cork but his quote was just so funny it was like we were expected to supper excused herself on the necessity of eating at the inn supped upon trout and roast fowl drank some more of the most admirable cider and new manufactory of a nectar between soda water and ginger beer and called pop because pop goes the cork when it's drawn and pop you go off too if you drank too much of it <laughs> <laughs> That's such an oh, eloquent yeah. way to describe when we ate some shit and then we <laughs> got <laughs> drunk. <laughs> I guess I Pretty wonder much. what what side are you popping out? He didn't necessarily explain what what side you pop from. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I wanna write Both I wanna sides, write in I guess. that language. <laughs> I like wish to pretty. write in a flowery way. <laughs> I don't say pop. People, yeah. people here say for that. oh yeah, that's weird when you like go that's to a Canadian I, thing now. It right? is a Canadian. Yeah. It is a very Canadian thing. Like I, you know, obviously I speak Spanish. So when I was living back home, people would just call them. I guess people just called them cokes. To be honest, yeah, it's yeah. like colas, right? Like it didn't really matter. Yeah, they'll if you go like well, I want a coke, they'll just be like which one right? <laughs> like fanta <laughs> oh right yeah but here if you say you want a coke you get literal coca-cola yeah no you get a coke yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you want a coke <laughs> it's different i think that's a lot of what you guys were saying is i think really how lacroix got lacroix got popular as well because that's really how the modern beverage industry is now too like there's a big shift over the past 10 or i mean for a long time now but i think a lot of the beverage industry is feeling it a lot more nowadays where it's a big shift from like let's try to find something healthier and obviously now there's just so much comp competition um it's not just you just it's not just coke anymore you know like there's so many different forms of carbonated water or drink options 
seven years ago we were working with vitamin water for example and they were like a healthy drink but they had massive issues with health drinks back then so when we were doing research there we found that yeah it was big because then people didn't like drinking vitamin water because it was too unhealthy as well and all that so it's crazy how all that stuff kind of comes into play um we did when we were doing research there and surveying well, people one of the pe- person people from atlanta i think all of a sudden just like screamed out we when we asked him what their favorite drink was he was just like grape drink yeah <laughs> 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 But yeah, there's so many different options nowadays. It's it's nuts. But that's kind of, yeah. That leads us to the history of LaCroix. But Nick, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your passion for LaCroix? Because we, we did bring you in as our resident. resident. My path towards LaCroix? La- as a resident LaCroix, expert. LaCroix fan, yeah. You're, you are the resident super LaCroix fan. super fan here. I think I began, actually, I will blame my master's degree on that, because during my master's <laughs> degree, there were like people who were drinking a lot of LaCroix at the time, and I just thought, oh, that's really, that's really weird sort of looking drink, I wonder what that is. And then I've always been searching for a path towards like how to get rid of Coca-Cola and other drinks in my life. I had a kombucha period before I met you guys. Oh, really? Uh, I had a big kombucha period. And then what I discovered was kombucha is probably so acidic that it did give me actually um, a lot of acid reflux, which is another. And then sometime in the last couple of years, I was just like, I think just bubbles is what I like. Yeah. And then that's how I sort of landed on LaCroix, just because according to them, and there is no proof quite yet. There is zero of everything in whatever they're doing, except for their naturally essenced. Naturally essenced. Uh, so, you know, you look at the can, everything says zero. You look at the ingredients, and it says water and natural essences. And, you know, whatever's in the natural essences. Yeah. Uh, koala nuts. Yeah, koala nuts. I mean, I could we'll find out. We'll find out. That's naturally well, essenced. They actually did get in trouble for that natural essencing part at some point. I think there's like a class action lawsuit against them for that. And they ended up having to say that um, they ended up having to say that the natural essences and stuff come from the flavoring. So the flavors are all naturally sourced. So how do they get the flavor? That's well, the question I mean, like for could- me. How do they get the flavor into the drink without adding anything to so i the think drink. what there's yeah right. i think for them they ended That's up the saying mystery. that yeah the flavors were all grabbed naturally but then they're never going to admit that the drink itself is natural but they'll admit that the flavors are and they're not going to admit they're not going to tell you how what parts are not natural because right so is that yeah. is that the magic is the magic that it's basically tea carbonated tea <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it is? <laughs> I wouldn't even I wouldn't even go as far as calling it tea. But it's carbonated. Well, I just feel like they're there's you know, are they just grabbing grapefruit peels and you know, soaking them in water? And then they're yeah. carbonating that. Well I think maybe more of like they grab the grapefruit peels and yeah, like let it melt or whatever, pull this dehydrate it or whatever and pull the flavors from it and then toss it. Uh, there used to be a time when there were when coconut was my flavor favorite. Oh, I really like that one. Yeah, I really like coconut. And for a while, and I've never found it again. And I don't know if it really exists or if I invented it in my mind. But there was, <laughs> was a, a coconut. Dream. It might have been a dream. Uh, I am certain that one day I picked up uh, a pack of grapefruit coconut Lacroix, and that oh. was. That that blew my mind, but it's since disappeared from existence. You you told me about that, and I went looking yeah. for it, and I couldn't yeah, find it. Yeah, it has. There are very few pictures of it on the internet too. So I think it was must have been like a bizarre special edition that just disappeared. Yeah. And since it's here, I well, might as well open it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That is what happened. I've never right? had a can of Lacroix in my life. Really? Uh, I've never even heard Simon of LaCroix of until you need to go. I started working in film. 
The first time I heard about LaCroix was when I think it was a friend of mine, Drea, who was like saying that it's like a film drink. I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's why I don't know about it because they only sell it to film people. (laughs) 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 As we mentioned, LaCroix was founded in 1981 by the G. Heilemann oh Brewing Company in Wisconsin. Oh, it's older than me, and I'm old. Yeah. And it's from Wisconsin. The home of nobody Pabst speaks Blue French. Ribbon. Yeah. But the name, <laughs> the actually, LaCroix, comes from La Crosse and the St. Croix River in Wisconsin, which is a branch river that branches from the Mississippi. That's it. <laughs> wow. That's it? <laughs> It has no, no French, French ties, ties whatsoever. whatsoever. It comes from Wisconsin. No. And it comes I it's weird like that the la comes from La Crosse and then Wait. the Croix comes from St. <laughs> Croix River. It's like why don't you just from Saint Croix. say that La Croix came from La Crosse? <laughs> <laughs> They're just like I'm willing to bet they didn't, but I think it's a hundred percent just them yeah. go this is oh, marketing yeah. the, genius. The, that's what but I the fun, th- the fun, th- yeah. The, no. Or sorry, the interesting about it is the marketing genius didn't come from the G. Heilemann Brewing Company. It actually came when they were acquired in two thousand three, oh. when the National Beverage Corporation bought them out and decided to rebrand Lacroix to what we know of it today. Now global or not global? It's owned by a bigger company now, as of two thousand three, and that's when Lacroix became popular from the rebrand. What's interesting about all of it is that they were like oh. super close to not actually going with this brand because the National Beverage Corporation actually hated this brand was made um, but then they decided to do like a like a survey and then the survey came out that the consumers love that branding the most so they trusted the consumers which you don't see a lot of companies do in my history working in advertising <laughs> i had maybe one company listen to my survey results it's like this is our strategy this is what the wow. serve the customers all want and they're like but we think that we should go this they're way like, we hate that's it what we want like, why did you even hire a strategist if you didn't listen <laughs> what? hey you got paid yep. it's okay they paid me a lot of money not to be listened to okay this is how genius the national beverage Get corporation is they trade in the stock market under the four letter words fizz <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> <laughs> that's pretty amazing, amazing. I that's pretty set, amazing set under nasdaq nice. and the smp these yeah. people know what they're selling. <laughs> no. But today there's like 25 different flavors of what I found of LaCroix. And three different wow. brands. That, I don't think I've explored every. There's 25 flavors, three brands. There's the original LaCroix, the Curate, which is the stronger flavored LaCroix, and the Nicola, which is the cola brand. Oh, what? It, uh, my name? It's named Nicola. after you. What? <laughs> they listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> you got I sponsored. The guy looking at all your stories is like, Nick, Nick, Nicola. Holy oh, maybe shit. we should make a cola brand. <laughs> well, I know. Look at this. So they got, they got Lacroix, La Cola, yeah. Nicola, Lacroix, Coconut Cola, Lacroix, Coffee, Exotica. Yeah. Wait, where, where do, you where get do these? I get it? Mostly in the states. Oh I think we don't get it here. Damn, America. We gotta go to, to Wisconsin. Go. We can't. We We're quarantined. <laughs> we want to go. Pump Look at all these flavors. Well, on the bright. Yeah, I'm wow. looking at a list of flavors right now. There's a lot. I don't see that coconut. I think they got rid of it. I think it was oh. not favorite. Yeah, pamplemousse was yeah. one of my favorites to begin with. To be quite fair. Well, on the bright side, I mean, you Cucumber could make your own Lacroix if you have a soda stream. Yeah. You can. I mean, it's like a, hmm. like, well, yeah, if you have a little system. bit of experimenting, but they did say if you want to do make your own, you make a soda water or get, or get a, make a, get a soda maker or any carbonated water, then you could put some fruit juice or the flavors they have, or you could actually look for candy flavoring oil. Candy and use flavoring that instead. oil. So you could that put a little bizarre. bit of that, a few drops of that into your whatever. And they say that the Katie's of the world apparently are saying that. The kid. <laughs> That's the best way to make. Um, do you really trust them? Yeah, I do. They've probably spoken to all the managers. 
Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you could find like candy flavoring oil. It makes sense, right? Like very good point. It's a little bit more natural and not really natural, but it might give you a little bit more of a naturally essence. naturally essenced flavor. <laughs> natural. Yeah. Plus, there's much more yeah. f- different varieties of flavors in candy flavoring oil get- than fruit juices or soda flavors. What I did find, speaking of healthy alternatives, is that you could mix LaCroix with alcohol and make some really good-ass cocktails. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, nice. For which, sure. Which so you have your basic you highballs, using? like what? LaCroix coconut with rum, LaCroix berry with rosé wine, cran and raspberry with vodka, and pomplamousse with gin. Those are your basic highballs you could start with. Ooh. Then you could get more sophisticated with some nice. other um, cocktails. You could get some rum, get some cold brew coffee, and orange LaCroix. You could mix whiskey, <laughs> ginger beer, and peach pear LaCroix to make a little bit of your own um, Kentucky oh, mule. I think is what oh, that like. sounds really good. Uh, mezcal, yeah. honey, and mango LaCroix. You could make your own some sort of... You could kind of turn gin. that to like a mango margarita, yeah. I guess. Uh, vodka, cranberry, vodka, cranberry juice, and grapefruit LaCroix. That will make you, I think, a Cosmo martini if you want to mix it. Or a Cosmo... Uh, cocktail nice, nice. and then you could have gin aperol and lemon lacroix i would drink lacroix now because first I, of all <laughs> no you could mix it with alcohol you should <laughs> you should try it i found the key lime key lime lacroix Ooh. to be my favorite but they key don't have it lime. everywhere i was trying to convince no. you that it's not the same <laughs> as lime key lime is a whole different animal so Nothing were you very animal. confused when you drank sprite for the first time because it's lemon lime Sprite? Sprite but it's a lemon like lime either. soda. No, I mean, we have Sprite. Sprite in, <laughs> we have Sprite in Colombia, so we just assumed. I just assumed it was. Uh, so what do you, what do they call Sprite it, there? Because here just, we call it lemon lime soda, or we don't call it, but that's what it's called, mm, like what defined as. Uh, good question. Not it's sure. Like I think they just based, I think they just simply said that it was lemon. Yeah, fair. Right. Yeah. Right. Because again, the confusion for me is, we call what we call lime in English here in Canada, in Colombia, it's just a lemon, right? So when I was learning English, they would grab the green looking one and basically say, this this in Spanish is lemon. Yeah. Therefore, in English, this is a lemon. Yeah. And then it turns enough. out when I came here that it's a lime. <laughs> <laughs> Lies. Lies. So it was just like, okay. Now you can um, forget about both of those because key limes are different. Yeah. They look like yeah, limes. That, they look like the different. green ones, but mm-hmm. they taste like magic. We yeah. should probably wrap up pretty soon. So we might as well ask the two questions we ask every show. Is it healthy and is it good? Whoa. It's, it's good. Apparently it's good. It's good. I'm going to go good. with it's good. <laughs> I don't think it's not. Yeah, healthy. I think when it comes to LaCroix. It's just yeah. water with carbonation. Uh, they yeah. do say, like, you know, you, it's funny. I saw this one article. They were saying, you know, the typical carbonated water is unhealthy because of for your teeth and all that. And then in the comments, the bottom is like, yeah, but like, you don't see a lot of people with teeth falling off. So <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a yes. long time for that. If you really want your teeth to fall out, yeah. start smoking. Or like them. if you want it to yeah. fall off, you, you well, probably keep, the... like if you gargle with carbonated water, maybe, on a glass of soda water and a glass of water. I mean, so it's I not say... good for you, but yeah. we're also not being exposed yeah, to Yeah, it's it not the worst. Level. I will say mm-hmm. this, and this is what sort of tempers my drinking of lacrosse. So as much of a fan as I am, I try not to drink mm-hmm. it that much. Though some, though lately, you know, because of quarantine, uh, you know, it's kind of like a fast trip yeah. to grab. I didn't really know that fact or like what it did to teeth until maybe like, maybe like two or three, two or three years ago, because yeah. there was a time on a film set that I drank it quite a bit and I just felt like my teeth were like tingling a little bit. And that's okay. when I realized and I was like, it had you, I could feel it in my mouth the direct right. correlation between drinking this a lot and then having yeah. that weird tingly feeling in the mouth it does seem to leave something in your teeth for sure i would say yeah right and you can taste it you can taste it. like even right now when i'm tasting the lacroix i feel like i can taste it in my teeth a little bit yeah yeah i have a feel. if you drink it you there is a moment where you can go too much lacroix <laughs> for sure for sure well so what's in our palates today uh i don't know i've been um... eating 
a lot of that Malaysian restaurant lately called John 316. Oh, All right, guys, yeah. I you guys have just been door dashing. Yeah. Uh, door dashing it, yeah. Their their um roti there is just yeah. unreal. I I have rediscovered cooking, which nice. is something that I was doing intermittently. Uh, it has also given me the chance to use my instant pot Ooh. quite a bit, so I'm Ooh, using the instant <laughs> pot. Those are fun. I've been making a lot of stews, nice. and it's. It's been working out just fine, but I wonder at what point does am I break? At what point I should break the wheel on this? Basically, I make a stew. I made a new stew, the first mm -hmm. stew, and then I had leftovers. So then I would then I froze those leftovers because I got tired. I'm not a person that can eat the same mm -hmm. thing, and I kind of forgot that I froze it. Then I went to the supermarket again, and I bought more stuff to make a stew. And then when I got home, I was like, oh, shit, I still have this leftover stew. So I made a new stew with that old stew in it. <laughs> and then I've just been doing this over this repetitive wow. cycle. It's of never adding ending the old... stew. Oh. <laughs> I've been it's adding this repetitive stew. cycle of the old stew into the new stew, into the instant You're pot. making whiskey there? And it's just like every time. <laughs> wow. Huh? That's like yeah. perpetual yeah. stew. It is a perpetual stew that like never ends. So the old oh, stew lives like... on the new stew. <laughs> hey, I know, frozen. but it just it feels frozen, so gross just thinking right? about because it's like, what if you have event? Eventually, you'll just have wonder, like, like three month old what? stew in there. Yeah. No, but I, like, I how suppose, at what percentage right? though? In my mind, I'm thinking of it like fermentation. Like, oh, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But there's probably a moment where I should stop adding the old stew into the new one. Yeah. No, I want to see how far this experiment can go. How far this, this, this could go for a while. That's how it goes. Anyway. <laughs> drink drink LaCroix. La <laughs> That's our episode today. Moral of the lesson. Yeah. Moral of the lesson? Lesson of the day? Moral of the... Story. Moral of That's the story. Was... Lesson of the day. <laughs> lesson of, oh, lesson of the pulpo moose. COVID. Quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway that's our no. episode that's a long one self-isolate that was a long one Bye. thanks for coming the thank you master. for inviting me mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know if i'm the lacroix master but i am a i'm a lacroix you are now this is smorgasbord Have a ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network or email us at team at geekhappynetwork.com. We'd love to hear from our fellow smorgies. This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn. Music by Mick Narciso. And videography by Bianca Goico. <laughs>